All right, cool. What are you doing this time? Well, Gary, as you know, if a character that you're playing as in Dungeons and Dragons learned to spell, you get that as well through the dark occult arts that the late great Jack Chick taught us. Oh, that dickhead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say if your character dies, you die. Which no. like, I was just like rubbing my hands like, yes, <laughs> yes, put it in my veins. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Suck it to uh, me one more time. <laughs> no, no, but I've been working very hard um, with my with my solo campaign here, but I've got my wizard up to where I can cast Prismatic Spray. Oh, hey! Yeah. It's about time that, like, that kind of spray showed up on the network instead of the other kind of spray. <laughs> yeah, my we're monochromatic to, spray. Yeah, we're trying I to usually... be... Like, we're trying to be a little bit more uh, a little bit more inclusive. Uh, but, yeah. you know, as you know, this is, a, th- this is an eighth... Mm, seventh, okay. or, seventh or eighth level... I, <laughs> I said yeah, that, it, and I realized I didn't know. I know it's a very it's high a level spell. Level spread, so. The seventh level spell. Yeah. <laughs> I said so, that you're like, yes, he's going to fall into my trap. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's a seventh level spell. It's a ev- evocation, and uh, it has kind of a random effect. Um, you know, it's a real kind of like wild card kind of thing. And that is how I'm going to uh, randomize this game. Okay, let's see if okay. my will negates. Okay, so here we go. Um Abracaprism. Oh no, Gary's dead. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh wait, no. He's he's just pretending, but he's holding something. Gary, where do you hold it? Oh, that was the effect. That's all I can say. (laughs) It's it's me now. He's reciting lines from my big fat Greek wedding. No. (laughs) You rolled a nine on your D8, and I'm back, baby. Ooh, that's good steak. Give me a lobster roll. <laughs> what is this character? I'm Gary. <laughs> How long can I do this? Okay. Uh, what's that you're holding, Gary? Uh, this is a copy of... <sighs> this is a copy of TNT Warriors of the Eternal Sun. Uh, fuck. Yeah, fuck. My name is Gary Butterfield. Gary, your voice has changed. You're back. Yeah, it, it hurt to be other Gary. <laughs> uh, and my, I'll my... go back. I'll go back. Like that sounded like a that would be a line from a 1980s drama where I had multiple personalities and you <laughs> abused me in, a, in an institution. <laughs> like, but it hurts to be other Gary. You be other Gary and break me out of this prison. <laughs> other Gary's got strongo powers. <laughs> well, you're Gary Prime, um, and I'm Cole Ross. Um, you don't know which one <laughs> I am. Yeah, the, uh, the two. I said Gary Prime and Cole Ross. The two, <laughs> two categories. You can either be Prime or you can be Ross. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is After Suffering, the show where we play uh, bad games that you uh, dictate to us, or that we randomly roll up, or that we choose. Yep. Uh, a number of things. Yeah. Uh, this is a random one. It was uh, recommended or suggested by J B, and we're, we've we, we've kind of ended up in a in kind of a sticky situation here because uh, yeah. co- coinciding with our uh, WRPG on Watch Out for Fireballs, which is Neverwinter Nights too, we have a double rock block of Dungeons and Dragons games on top of the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that we do. Yep. <laughs> uh, and just the regular Dungeons and Dragons I I have in my day to day life. So right. it, it's like the universe is conspiring to like. Uh, so, so you like donuts, do you? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, these donuts. Yeah, it's uh, it's it is seriously it's death by chocolate. Yeah, uh, it's death by beholder. I am I'm a death. I am a chocoholic. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, so. This is uh, Warriors of the Eternal Sun, uh, which is a Sega Genesis. Uh, it's the only D and D game that came out on Genesis. So if you're a Genesis trash baby, like this was your this was your port in a storm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and boy, what can you say about Warriors of the Eternal Sun? So it's AD and D, right? It's a, it's it's not two E. I don't I don't I don't think it's uh it's it's uh, it uses the uh, a campaign setting that I had no idea what it was the Hollow World, yeah, the, the Hollow uh, Man, yeah, the, the the Hollow World campaign setting, which I'm sure we talked about at least briefly in that D and D episode we oh, did. I have no recollection of it. I'm gonna need it's, I'm gonna need a log line on the Hollow World, Gary, because the Wikipedia did not shed any light on this. It's it's just a very generic fantasy world that happens to be like, you know, we're on the you're on the inside of the world. Hmm. 
you know, like a hollow earth kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's not very uh, distinctive. Like it may as well be um, like Mistara. Right. It, know, so, may, it sounded a lot like a lot like Mistara, but it was like different tribes of gnolls you were fighting. There, there's a little bit of that. Like if, if it has anything that distinguishes it, as far as I understand, because there's not as far as D&D settings, it is one of the less developed ones. Um, if there's anything that distinguishes it, it's like a little bit lower fantasy. Hmm. You know, there's like a little bit more um, like there, there's not quite it's not quite as high fantasy. So there's yeah. not as many creatures. It's more like you're likely to fight lots of orcs and and yeah, nobles and goblins yeah. and shit as opposed to kind of weirder, more imaginative things. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's pretty it's like kind of Conan-y hmm. uh, in that respect. I mean, you can still have armor and everything, but it's a little bit more conan in that respect. Yeah. But there's not tons of stuff. And I think there are there were books set in it, but mm. I, I haven't read any of them. Yeah. Um, so it's that it's that system. Um, it's got a very weird. So it's uh, it's half first person dungeon crawling. Like if you're indoors, it's a dungeon. Um, it's, a, so I, it's 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 it, that. But also the, the, the combat is real time. Yes. <laughs> Which is like, man, I mean, just to, just the to, so the next next week. We're doing Eye of the Beholder. Right. Uh, and so so that's that's the true of that, too. So we just have to be very careful. This is like the end boss for this podcast. <laughs> like doing these two episodes back to back. Um, so it's like that, like in, in Eye of the Beholder. Uh, but even though that version of Eye of the Beholder is different, which is we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's real time, uh, like the PC version of Eye of the Beholder, the Super Nintendo version. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're not in dungeons, it's overhead of this very strange perspective. Yeah, it's um, it's like, a it's tibia perspective. It's like that free, yeah. free to play MMO kind of thing. It's not quite, not quite uh, like an isometric projection. It is like everybody is just tilted forty five degrees to the left, but the buildings are tilted forty five degrees to the right. Yes, and the uh, the ground looks like flat, like you're a hundred percent above it, but everything else is at a tilt. So you mm-hmm. get this idea, like it looks like you're looking at the world and everything is tilted, not like it's a perspective trick. Right. Like it actually looks like everything's leaning over. It's very strange. <laughs> very, um, very disorienting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's you, you and your four, four guys, three guys like following behind you and kind of like an impressive, like it doesn't get in the way because mm-hmm. uh, they just will automatically pathfind around stuff. Yeah. They're using uh, some of that, the ooze tech. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here, the ooze tech, <laughs> ooze technology. Uh, and as far as I got in this, um, I played this very briefly when I was younger. Okay. Um, cause my, my cousin had it, but he hated it. And so I didn't play it very much cause I was a little too young to, you know, to kind of grok it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I played this time, I kind of walked around some fields and fought some beast men. Yeah. Um, and that's really it. Like it, it's kind of has, um, like this game and the next one, it's kind of weirdly impressive in exactly how WRPG it is. Yeah. Like, so we, we, we didn't talk about this when you're fighting people in the overworld. Um, it is like a strategy RPG kind of thing. Like it is turn-based and you are either moving or you are, um, you know, picking your targets and, uh, yeah, kind of D- goes D- in style. initiative you order. Have, yeah. Yeah. You have like a move and an attack and you move in initiative order. And like, it's very D and D like yeah. it has fancy magic and it has all those things to it. Yeah. Um, I had this weird suspicion that like, I bet you this game is not that bad. Yeah. If I, if I was stuck with it as a, as a kid, as like a, a kid that was a little bit older, you know, mm-hmm. I bet you I could get into it. Yeah. Um, it, it suffers from some of the same problems as the, uh, um, Lord of the Rings game for the SNES that we did yes. way early on, um, which is a whole lot of enemies that really don't add up to much um, and not an awful lot of direction as to what you're supposed to be doing at any given moment. Like there is a very lovingly done title scroll and opening cinematic about, you know, goblin, the goblin war and being sucked into this new, this new and hostile world. But that's pretty much it. Like you talk to some people in a the town, they mention a swamp and you're just kind of supposed to go out on your own. That's one of the things I think is probably secretly neat about it yeah. is that like it is very open world. Like you go mm-hmm. out and just like, hey, make adventure in this land. Yeah. Um, the plot, my understand as my understanding is like. Eventually, um, people in your, you know, your hometown, your kind of home base are turning against you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's because they, they fall under of... the enchantment of a worm whose name I cannot find right now. Yeah, yeah there is an evil worm. So if you like <laughs> evil worms, you will like this game. Um the uh, so somebody who has uh, and I, they, I don't want to toot my own horn, but has probably thought more than most about D and D and how it gets adapted to video games. Mm-hmm. You know, like if if there's if there's an area of scholarship that I have, that is probably one of them. You know, I have a couple of rings in that or whatever. Um, the, one of the problems with this is the same problem uh, that a lot of these 16 bit and contemporary games have is that uh, they don't realize that in like a D and D session, so like you sit down, you play play a D and D, even a campaign. Um, fights are major things and you're going to have like probably one of them a night. Right. 
you know, they take a long time. Um, so you don't have that many fights. These things kind of pattern that since it's a video game, they need to have action. Mm-hmm. So you end up getting into like way too many fights. Yeah. In yep. this, and they're you way have, too slow. You have to have action, but also like that. This is what computers can do. This is what game systems exactly. can they do. Can like they, they're like that. That is the most numbers, numbers driven portion of, uh, of, of, of D and D. And it is also the portion that I have just the least interest in. Well, it's, it's something that I can get behind and it's something that the technology just kind of didn't get to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to make it work. Like, um, because there are ways to make that really acceptable. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, as as uh, like I love Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, the combat is like lightning quick. Mm-hmm. So, like, yes, you run into some wolves every once in a while, and early on, they're like serious kind of tactical considerations. Like, you might end up using a wand on a wolf. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, not to tie into our our Animorphs episode, but like, you <laughs> might end up using a wand on a wolf. Whereas, like later, it just becomes like it just in, like, your guys will just take care of it. You know, the, the, yeah. everything moves so quickly that, like, it just takes a couple seconds to get through, and it's, like, very fast. Um, this doesn't have that, where because you're sitting down and putting in every command um, over and over and moving your guys and getting them in place, uh, it is just very slow um, to get through these combats, and there are too many of them. Yeah. You know, this is like playing with the DM who, like, rolls the random encounter dice like four <laughs> times as, as often as suggested like instead of like you moving from kingdom to kingdom and they roll it once to see what the encounter is they roll it every you know 10 times yes this is four there. days of travel so therefore yeah 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 exactly so there's four different encounters in the day and four different encounters at night yeah you know because you're just constantly getting like ambushed by like snakes and beast mana and shit mm-hmm. in this game and they, that's what kind of ruins it it's like it's not like i, I think this combat is necessarily bad like my preferred combat is an overhead turn-based kind of like where areas of effect matter and stuff like that. Like that's yeah. what I want mm-hmm. out of an RPG combat. Uh, here, area effects aren't really a thing, um, and regular scrubs are way too time-consuming to beat. Yeah, and also because it's D and D, and because it's this kind of thing, you can miss. And when things move that slow, um, yeah, missing is will a miss really, a really big deal. And to be fair, you know, and to white knight for my chosen genre a little bit, like you, like uh, somebody pointed this out. Um, I was doing research for the other game we're doing, and somebody pointed this out, and I forgot about it. Do you remember how often you miss in Final Fantasy One? That's pretty. It's a lot. Like it's a lot. Like you, you miss. <laughs> you know, it, it's like D and D Second Edition yeah. attack rules. Like you're, you're just as likely to miss as to hit. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's really, really obnoxious. And that's something I like. That again, the way Baldur's Gate gets around that is you make so many attacks that like mm-hmm. it evens out. Yeah. It's very quick. That's also. Uh, I mean, that, that's also a complaint about something like a like a Final Fantasy Tactics or an XCOM. Sure. You know, like, sure. Just, you, and, just, you just miss a lot in this genre, but like how gracefully they deal with that and like how dramatic it can feel sometimes, I yeah. think, is, is, is where you get around that being such a such a bummer. And to, to this game's credit, the enemies have the same constriction, which is a big difference. Right. You know, so like in Final Fantasy Tactics, you know, enemies will miss you and it has that sense of drama where like, man, I'm going to die if they don't miss. Oh, fuck. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. like they actually missed here. It's like the enemies miss you most of the time, too. Because it's it's D and D, so you start with very low hit points, but like right. you can go through many battles without getting hit, you know, and it's fine because you're just fighting snakes and shit. Mm-hmm. It's just, but it feels like filler in a way that is pretty negative, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I feel like this is probably not a trash fire. No. Like no. as somebody who likes uh, gold box combat, which is very similar to what the Overland combat is, and likes Eye of the Beholder, which is what the dungeon combat is like. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I think that the biggest probably problem with this as a game uh, is uh, one, it has that lack of direction, which I think is kind of neat, but there's mm-hmm. little defined. I mean, that that is only a problem when <laughs> so uh, podcaster problems, right? No, oh, never. Yeah. It's too long. Well, I bought that when I was in college, and so I needed to get them uh, as much hour per game as I could. Yeah, or hour, hour per dollar as I could. Like all that could be turned around. Like that plus side about this being aimless is great, but when you're trying to get enough to talk about in a, in a half hour, like that ends up being yeah. a place where this is really not the kind of game that is suited for our approach. And on it's this also particular a, show, you know, an old old man problem. Yeah, you know, it, it's also something that is like you know the times there are changing as far as tolerance for that shit. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, talking to. Uh, uh, old old network friend Amy Holbrook on on Twitter and stuff. Mm-hmm. We're talking about that as a, as a thing, like you know, and it's it's a well worn observation, but just happens to be like one hundred percent true. Is just the like idea that like, man, you know, I do not uh, I do not want to deal with these like ultra long games that have a thousand encounters in them, mm-hmm. regardless of how those articulate. Even if I like the the actual combat system in this game more than I'm you know I like a tap a tap a tap a game, mm-hmm. uh, I just don't want to deal with as much of it, you know. 
um yeah i I didn't i didn't despise the time that i that i have with this like so i I had no idea this was a a DD game it came through as warriors of the eternal sun for some reason i think i had it mixed up with eternal champions which oh man, we really shouldn't burn any cast on that, and you know, yeah, because we love to do that out. at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah um, that's a special one. But when I realized what it was, I was like, "Oh fuck, uh oh!" And like it was yesterday, yeah. so it was kind of uh, maybe a little bit too late to change it. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Again, yeah. it confirms our thesis that the Genesis is a, a PC ass system, and they were doing, yeah. <laughs> which is bizarre because also it had the the fewest number of inputs for that generation. If you're using the yeah. standard controller, um, which make which makes the UI for this a struggle. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not again it's not an insurmountable struggle, but it's yeah. not it doesn't come naturally. Right. You know, figuring out how to do things. There's lots of menus and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it's like I <laughs> boy I I felt I had this like very distinct memory that was like man I wish that somebody had slipped me this as a kid because like <laughs> at a certain age I probably would have gotten real into this. Yeah. Um. You know, and it's not it's not like a terrible looking game. The portraits and stuff are pretty goofy. Uh, <laughs> well, the portraits they, they, they do uh, doom faces depending on your yeah. uh, on your health, which is pretty great. Those are really great. There's a lady, um, kind of like sorceress lady, who has a doom face that's really good. Like she has a, a tooth bearing <laughs> snarl that I really love. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at one portrait that looks a little bit like Storm, but she's got crazy eyes. Like you can see. Yeah, the that's entire... what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like her her eyes are really really good. Like nah. <laughs> like, <laughs> The, the weather is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man <sighs> oh yeah we can't we can't digress into x-men though because you already spent that too i'm telling you this is the end boss for the podcast like <laughs> this three episode run at the end of the year yeah it's just uh we got we got to finish out the man will 2016 ever end <laughs> the um yeah, yeah. So we have oh, forget, min- all the, forget all the other things. Just uh, oh, yeah? the fact that we have this hard clutch of magic uh, sufferings. Yeah, no. So, won't somebody think of us for once? Here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we have 15 minutes left in this episode. <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can figure it out. We haven't even hit game packs yet. <laughs> like, there, there's ways we can do it. Also, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. The sun's kind of weird. I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, helium? Uh, of all the elements, helium. It's the funny voice one, huh? Yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, weird. Um, so, so you're saying that's called helium because it comes from the sun. Is that correct? Helios, the uh, guy. Huh. Uh, huh. How interesting. <laughs> um, this, I, you know, this is going to be us talking more about the game, too. Yeah. Uh, but the um, one of the things that kind of I feel like validates or backs up my like feeling like this probably is not that bad mm-hmm. uh, is one of the best user reviewed game facts games we've ever done for the show. True. Like the minimum is four four hearts. Like everyone on who's reviewed this for Game Facts agrees it is four hearts or better. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of a scale of five, <laughs> you know, uh, pretty pretty surprising. Yeah. Um, no, and, and like yeah. there, there's not an awful lot of like funny writing. I I, I marked one here, but it's like not very true to its D and D roots, but a good old school RPG. And they just like for the story, ten out of ten, amazing. None of the old rescue the princess, save the world, seal an ancient evil, and discover lost treasure stuff. And then, then they just outline the entire story. Like they present the, yeah. the, the opening scroll. None of that. And here, yeah. here's a lot of that. Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, oh no, that's the next one too. Fuck man. <laughs> the, the, the next game has a really good back in it. And this one doesn't, it's like, it's, this is like too legit. It even gets the, um, uh, Dan Simpson, who is my favorite game facts writer. Oh yeah. His, uh, D and D rules back, uh, mm. that shows up on Baldur's gate and stuff is linked in this. Uh, where he shows the different uh, ways it articulates yeah. their rules. I don't know if you are. This is a fun fact, though. No, no, this um, is so great. It's, it's variations and stuff. Like Dan Simpson is a hero. Um, he's <laughs> has, done, has uh, he gone on to do other stuff? He's the one who has written the best and longest facts for uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Okay. And it's been Dale. So uh, if you ever, you know, end up playing one of those games, which like Baldur's Gate 2 is legitimately great and is is worth your time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he he has done the uh the super comprehensive back on it nice um so yeah dan simpson is legit yeah i saw that was on there and like i, I thought it would be a little bit too crunchy but this is actually re- really interesting because it like breaks it down by title yeah um, yeah so you're like oh uh like how did this game specifically fuck with the rule set and and do things yeah it's so it's you know these, these guys like the real heroes because a lot of people there's a real hero complex and in game facts writing <laughs> so get, you know people really feel like they're doing a doing a i mean they, yes it is a service they, they make a i mean they, they make a show out of how onerous the task is 
and how yeah how you know there's a there's uh you know, i don't believe in virtue signaling signaling but like there is an element of just like i took it upon myself to make this fact for heathcliff fast where, and the furious you know <laughs> where's my parade yeah yeah uh and whereas like dan simpson never does that and has done like the best work on this site yeah you know uh it's pretty amazing it's like him you know president evil and then uh per jorner who is the guy who did the really they're not on game facts but he's done the really really good fallout uh, facts that are elsewhere if you just look up uh, per Jorn or Fallout. And those are just like amazing guides uh, yeah. to those games. So just like everything that's possible. Yeah. And, uh, don't um, forget about CBX Freak too. He's also really good. He does the uh, a bunch of Resident Evil stuff. Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just want to make sure all my fa- all the faves get a prop. <laughs> yeah. So, so as much as we talk a lot of shit about game facts, like... Yeah. No, it's like the I feel really love. Yeah, like the, the, there are people who are doing. I don't know. It's it's weird to call it yeoman's work because they're working on these really high profile. God's like, <laughs> yeah, well, not that, but like it's 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 this weird thing. We're just like there there there's a tremendous amount of thoroughness and uh, kind of like workman quality to to, to what somebody like a CVX freak does, um, and it, it's yeoman's work. Whereas somebody who will do the fast and furious is acts like they're doing God's work. Well, and there's an element, too, that it's, like, reflected in the game. Yeah. You know, as well. So, like, certain games will support a certain, high, like, caliber mm-hmm. of, of faxmanship. <laughs> the, uh, uh, anyway, like, imagine, I mean, I, I said something about this last episode, but, like, you're because we we're talking about Marvel shit. But, like, somebody who doesn't know this podcast and just got in the middle of this and, like, we're just, like, having this serious discussion about faxmanship. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, how badly do we deserve to get, like, just literally killed by Wedgie? <laughs> Like somebody just needs to like pro like reverse prolapse us with our underwear. <laughs> oh no! You mean just like shove the, shove our own underwear up our ass? Yeah, like prelapse us or like uh, you know something <laughs> con, like that. Conlapse, conlapse. Yeah, yeah. Use our underwear as a condom and fist us into oblivion because we're talking about factsmanship in a serious tone. <laughs> Like this is a very good game fact. This I'm, is a bad game. I fact. mean, like we're 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 really submerged in it, and it's not just for yeah. this. Like it's not just a source of comedy for us. We've, I, I don't know. Like we spend a lot of time thinking and talking about these. Like yeah, you know, like we we we, we look at them. There is objectively a difference. Like I have a heuristic. Yeah. Like for a game that I like or a game for Watch Out for Fireballs. Like I I, I know what to look for. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like how well formatted is the table of contents because that actually, imp- you know, that tells me a lot about the quality of stuff that I'm going to get down the line, right? Yeah, you know, is like what what version number is this? Is it marked complete? Has it been touched in a long time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it, it matters. Like it's this is like a, a window into a separate podcast that reviews game facts. <laughs> a separate podcast <laughs> <laughs> like like that's all they do is just like the game facts mm. review podcast <laughs> could like could be a thing because they are they are they're big yeah um yeah it is a uh, it really matters <laughs> it really matters it does oh man <sighs> um yeah the warriors of the eternal sun man the um it is very very hard to and boy this is this is rough because i'm so out of D shit mm-hmm. like well, we're gonna do this next episode and like i have a lot of things to say about the game mm-hmm. and just out of D digressions man yeah like we literally made ourselves a, a, a sieve for which to like pour all of our D digressions into yeah we we, we backed you know? ourselves into a corner we like outsmarted ourselves a thousand times over for this <laughs> <laughs> like our own worst enemy this is hell yeah. <laughs> what do we do <laughs> it's us from a year ago thwarting us today yeah, we need we need to like go back into the past and consult with ourselves yeah. at a young age and just be like, hey, hey, hey. little Gary, m- make up something funny about Warriors of the Eternal Sun. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, you mean like in like in thirty years? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. What? So what? What's in the news lately, Cole? What have you been up to? Oh, nothing good. Um. I'm... <laughs> oh, I was like, oh yeah, you're don't doing... say nothing for the love of God. <laughs> no. No. I thought you were going to be like, don't say nothing good. Like, oh, what's wrong, Oh, no, Cole? no, 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 yeah. no. I just, I thought, <laughs> you're no. just like, nothing. It's a, I'm like, my, my <laughs> again, <laughs> also the fact that we're, we've got, a, we've got Neverwinter Night 2 going on. That's all I've been doing. In fact, it's, it's amazing. It's like we, it's, it's again, it's like we, the monkey's paw wish. <laughs> like, living La Vida, Mysteria, like. <laughs> um, I've been watching Terrace House. What 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 is that? Uh, it's a Netflix series. It is a uh, thing Japanese real world, except everybody is super pleasant. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's really good. Uh, so uh, the, the, anybody who's listening to this is probably the seventh time they've heard Terrace House described to them. I found it through the McElroys. Uh, Griffin does a show with his wife called Rose Buddies where they talk about The Bachelor. And I listen to that because I like I, I like Griffin a lot. And his mm-hmm. wife is funny, too. Don't have haven't seen a single frame of The Bachelor. But they talked about this, the, this show. And it's like, OK, we, we've got this house in Tokyo. We have, you know, three, three boys, three girls uh in the uh you know like in their like 20s right each of them has a profession they're all working they just they go about their lives they just live in this house with each other and like they can date each other or not um they can you know talk to the cameras or not and it's shot very cinematically and there's this panel of super delightful not judges but just like pop stars and celebrities and stuff who like they'll they'll just cut away to that and like talk about what just happened talk about this conversation that these two guys had about the other girls while they were doing their laundry so just kind of (laughs) color commentary yeah yeah interesting so does it is it one of those shows it reminds me of how when people describe the great british bake-off where (laughs) like it's just comfort and blandness in a weird way, like, oh, these people are just living a life and you're just kind of watching it and there's no drama or anything. And that's kind of why it's good. Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, it, 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 like, it would be a slow life television show is what okay. it is. But like the people are super charming and super like pleasant, you know, like <laughs> you can see the seeds of like conflict, but like there's no producer who is coming yeah, in and trying like, to like sow shit. Yeah, there, there like, are no challenges. She said that about you. Like, yeah. yeah, there's no drama, artificial drama. Right. And and it's very like, you, like you're watching people and like, oh, like, like those two get along really well. Or like this guy seems like, you know, seems like he's good, you know, really well put together mentally. You know, like everybody just seems to be like on top of their shit in a way but, that is that that, that, that that is nice. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is blindness porn a little bit, but it's very, mm-hmm. you know, it's like looking into a house of friends. I, I, I think that you think that it has no drama, but I'll let you know that episode 44 is called Price of a Lie. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm very early. Done, done, done. <laughs> I think I'm on like episode nine or something. Episode like 23 that. is called No Use Crying Over Meat. Yep. <laughs> and episode 20 is called Scissor Hands. What's going on? Cole? <laughs> oh, man. It looks yeah. like the second season gets pretty intense. <laughs> I haven't seen the second. Uh, so it's it's weird. It's like a show that was on Japanese television and Netflix revived it. And okay. I heard them. I heard people talking about this on a podcast. And I'm like, you know, what? I just need to turn off my brain. I've watched all of my regular shows way too many times. I don't I, I don't I'm not quite up to Westworld just yet. Uh, that feels like mm-hmm. a little bit too much of an investment, but I will, you know, put on this and just like maybe read the maybe read the closed captions, but just like listen to listen to these very pleasant people talk in a foreign language and like zone in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and also what, like I I was really hoping it'll be we need to save episodes of After Suffering like this for when you finish Westworld because then this could have just been like I haven't gotten a chance to Westworld debrief <laughs> with anybody and I'd really like to okay uh, that's a uh, I, I intend to watch it over break we're, so so one of the reasons yeah. why we are so and we might as well just reveal this we we're engineering the recording schedule to where we will have two weeks off of recording which has mm-hmm. never happened yeah it's pretty <laughs> so. rare. Yeah. So we and we want to be able to do that for holidays. Yeah. Stuff like I'm going to go home and Cole's going to do whatever it is people in Cincinnati do. What (laughs) what is going on in Ohio with all the human rights violations going on right now? Uh, Again, not to make things too political, but every every single time I go on Twitter, there's another really terrible Ohio law passed. Um, Well, Kasich is a shithead. Um, Yeah. He only looked relatively not like a shithead uh, when he was standing on stage next to Cruz and Trump. Um, you know, like I, I was just as guilty as a lot of people of saying like, I, I would be okay with Casey being president because emotionally, and it's a very emotional appeal. I will gravitate toward what, what feels like the one sane person in a room, or I will gravitate to, toward like level headedness, you know? And he sure. seemed like he had an awful lot of convictions, which again, next to those other people, probably fine. Um, yeah. however, yeah. um, not a trustworthy know, curve. You're, you're. <laughs> right right, right. he's like so so he's got those he's got those convictions i like but a bunch more and in, in, in addition to that it is basically every, every level of government is is republican so after this huge wave basically there is no reason for anybody not to do something really really bad yeah. um you know and so specifically that six-week abortion bill that you're referring to that was just kind of like added on to a completely unrelated bill and it looks like it's going to pass um, I haven't checked and, you know, who knows what happened in the two weeks that 
you know, intervene between when we record this and when this episode comes out. But uh, it is up to Casey to decide whether or not to accept that um, and whether or not to just airlift our entire state and like situate it south of Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. That and that coupled with the guns everywhere bill. Oh, yeah. Like the like, <clears throat> yes, you should be able to bring a gun onto into your classroom because yeah. we've never had a problem with school. Shoot, you know, yeah. college shootings, like, you know, as a thing. <laughs> yep. Um, well, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not like a, a national mania that's happening or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not like every single day you're reading about something, something horrible happening. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, it's not great. Um, the only, the only real hope that we have, and I think the only real hope that a lot of the country has is at the city level, you know, municipal governments and, uh, specifically mayors, uh, fighting back at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. It's rough. I, I can't, the other thing I, I, I my, 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 go ahead. I was Sorry. gonna say I can't defend my state. <laughs> like, yeah, I, 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 I love it here. Like it, it is, it is a very beautiful state. Um, I like my city a lot. I've lived here for ten years. Um, I, I like the life that I've made for myself here. But like right now, it, it, it does feel like we are kind of exhibiting the most of the bad things. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of news, and it's also you know because I'm, I'm friends with Bob. And stuff. Who who is a an expat? Yeah, he's very Ohio. vocal about being expat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's as bad as he thinks it is. But well, he's, he came, he's from, he came from, from like Youngstown. Youngstown. Yeah, yeah, like Youngstown, Youngstown is, which is like yeah, that's the, that's the a rough scene. Ohio. Like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the uh, I, I mean I've I've got a, a a funny TV show I've been watching, but I want to save it for the next episode because of, okay, and boss challenge <laughs> like because we're fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. What what are you what a what a hodgepodge, man! This is what Warriors of the Eternal Sun does for you. <laughs> this is this is the uh, this is the 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 downside to them getting sucked in the other dimension. Mm, yeah, you know? we're we're it's left kinda, over here. Where did our friends go? It's kind of shitty that they just got sucked into another a dimension that's the same kind of low fantasy, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like if we got sucked into a dimension that was just like the same thing, but with instead of you know, uh, like the the third largest minority group being like. You know, uh, black people would be the third largest minority group being like, you know, Puerto Ricans or something like just like <laughs> some like and not that, that like not to there, I'm not saying there's no difference in that. Right. There's definitely a huge difference. But just being like it being a very similar world, you know, and but having to be sucked into another dimension to have that happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's something I, I it, associate with, uh, you know, it, it, yeah. it is it is a very it is a misuse of that uh, of that plot technology. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, we we, like, we have invented just... a teleporter. Oh my gosh, that's a huge breakthrough. What does it do? It moves you one house over. Yeah, it would be like if I went through a teleporter and it moved me to Seattle. <laughs> you know, and it's like it's definitely different. Yeah. You know, but it's not like or or you to um like uh, uh Philadelphia or something like that. And that's a lot. That's a, a bigger stretch. <laughs> well, it's a bigger it's a bigger stretch spatially, mm. but it's not as big a stretch. Like it's a relatively similar sized city. Mm. You know, and and. Yeah. culturally not that different <laughs> you know um like a little bit i feel like philadelphia is probably a little bit more urban than cincinnati but not like hugely so yeah yeah we're we're, you know? we're more of a more more of a pittsburgh yeah pittsburgh there we go yeah like uh you know just like move out it's like oh can you imagine living in pittsburgh as opposed to <laughs> cincinnati you know uh, the sports memorabilia would be really different i would hate <laughs> I, I would hate cincinnati as opposed to being indifferent i'd probably be indifferent to cincinnati that's a sports as rival a, sports rivalry between the uh, yeah. the Bengals and the steelers oh, okay yeah is that uh oh huh. Yeah, there, well, was, well, well. there was some there was some drama between uh, uh, about a uh, ref call and head hunting the last time the the Steelers were here it was a really big deal. What what do you mean a uh, rough call and head hunting? Uh, the the, uh, the referees uh, looked the other way on some very obvious head hunting on uh, on the uh, the Bengals. No, it was the it was the Steelers side. I think can one you, of them. Can you explain what what head hunting means in in the context of being in a sport? I was thinking you were talking about like draft picks head hunting. Like no. I'm going to get this like this college kid to be on. No, my no, team. that's 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 just called drafting. Uh, no, head hunting is uh, is like when a coach says, "I need you, I need you to injure this person as much as you can." Oh wow! Yeah, like that is a that I, is a thing that, that that's what it's called. Like, hey, like he's going to be a problem for us, like down the line. It, it is in our best interest. If you, yeah, if you like hit it, if you just tackle him from behind and just like fuck up his knees. Wow. Yeah, and so it was like a, it, there was like a like a minor uh, let, let's let <laughs> let's say a kerfuffle level riot inside of our stadium because of that. Uh, mm. no, nobody came out of it looking very good. Is this um? Did you listen to that uh, stuff you should know about uh, that concussion syndrome? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but CTE. Like, a, no, no, it's, yeah. it's on my list. 
like this is, I mean, we've already talked about, I've, I've talked about how this, this guns everywhere and this anti-abortion law is evil. So like anybody we've lost <laughs> for that, we've probably already lost. Yeah. Do you think there's like probably a pretty good argument that like football shouldn't be right. Right. Like given right. how, how injury it is. I feel like we've maybe already talked about this stuff, but like we, we, we have people don't like when we talk about sports because we very obviously don't know about sports, but like when the best argument for your sport is, well, maybe the helmets are too good because we're hitting each other too hard with them. And that is causing as much damage, but we're just, yeah, <laughs> like, I just, I, there's no, there's no way to like do the arithmetic for it. Right. Like there, there, you know, it, it is literally apples and oranges where you're like, Oh, the, the joy and money that comes out of this industry versus yeah like yeah. literally just like people getting concussed until they can't until mm-hmm. they become suicidally depressed yeah and you do know terrible and, things i mean just to the yeah to their yeah, families and, and until stuff. they like, cr- you become, you become a monster. themselves yeah yeah it's, it's just amazing like i don't uh i like more and more and I, i've talked about this like i've said this many times but like i just get to the point where i can't like if I had to explain this to to something that was mm-hmm. objective, I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like what a what a time to what a weird world. Mm-hmm. What a world. <laughs> you know, like yeah, ding dong, it's me, the weird world. <laughs> we 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 pay people to dress up in colorful costumes and can cuss each other. Yep. Oh, and sometimes the leaders of these people specifically say like, "Hey, that guy, break his leg." <laughs> yeah, like this this person who has a family and like a like has to walk places and stuff. Like <laughs> injure this guy because of this game. Like it yep. is just. It is so hard for me to conceive of. Yeah, yeah, and and and, 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 the, and the and the billionaires who own these men, um, instead of building their own stadiums with their own billions of dollars, or uh, <laughs> you know, uh, having them be self sustaining businesses, no, they get the local governments to build them with taxpayer money, and uh, don't actually let any of the money that comes into the stadium really go back to the cities that yeah. it comes into. Like, like no level of this is actually defensible. <laughs> well, and then in the college, like I've talked about before, in the college oh, yeah. level, like constantly dealing with like oh we can't pay people in our department but mm-hmm. we just hire this new coach yeah on the off chance they might be good enough to get us this you know because the integrity of the sport it's it's important that we maintain the integrity of the sport by them being amateur athletes yes yeah at the expense of the integrity of learning at, a, at the university yeah you know it is just uh it is it is a thing that i will never really understand and like everything that i say that i don't understand like i something that's been that's been happening a lot and just to, to save this this episode from complete uh you know uh, uh banality i guess um <laughs> is that uh you know so so since in this 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 political climate that i'm in that where it's like I'm, I'm feeling very insecure and scared a lot of the time i've been really into this like uh i want to understand you know yeah. uh like if there's a side which mm-hmm. like there shouldn't be but like if you think of it in those terms like i want to understand yeah i want to understand what like the re- the re- reasonable person you know because not everybody who supports i think some people have been like when they've written angry emails to us they've been like you guys are not inclusive because you think everybody who is conservative is evil i don't think that at all but i do want to un- i want to understand that and it's really hard to actually get that like get a reasonable discussion where it's like where I can actually parse out like what's the difference between my outlook and your outlook mm-hmm. without, uh, you know, the, the kind of resorting to either, uh, you know, kind of ad hominem attacks right. or, uh, uh, you know, these kind of abstractions. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was like, what happened is such a shock. We, we had it so wrong. That's a reasonable response. I yeah. think is to, is to want to stop, work it a little bit slower and take us, take a second deeper look at it. And, and it's something I've always, I've always wanted, you know, I always have that urge, but I have it more now, Mm -hmm. you know, I've I've just kind of, and there's the same thing with the sports thing. Like if somebody can make that argument to me, Mm -hmm. like I want to, I want to hear it. Like I want to hear the argument that's like, oh, this actually makes sense. Yeah. You know, that like it is, it is good and makes sense that, you know, this, this kind of concussion blood sport is like how we (laughs) do these things. And I, it just, I just, I can't, I can't conceive of one. It doesn't mean I think that's people who make yeah. that as bad i just want to know and the, and, the, and the tricky part the argument for whether or not this thing should exist is up against the argument of why this thing is enjoyable to watch or why this is a good why it's good sure you know and like, like I, I get that part more like that's something i wouldn't have gotten when i was younger but as i get older like i i understand sports more mm-hmm. you know like i understand the appreciation of it significantly more yeah with still not feeling like it's a it's worth the cost of what we spend when mm-hmm. you know i read about stuff like that yeah yeah you know uh or in the case of like the college thing experience it mm-hmm. so like the, the what i would like if if like a, a very bland superpower i would love to have <laughs> 
would be able, or maybe I just need to, you know, I need, uh, you just need different I, friends. <laughs> well, I, that's what I was going to say, but I, it's like, I've tried that. Like when I've had people who I've talked to, it, it doesn't go well. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't go as well as I want to. And I'm not, I possibly my fault. I feel like it's not my fault, but I, I could be totally wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Um, where I, I just want somebody who's like, can you explain this to me? And like, you know, explain to me, like, I know you're not evil. Explain to me what the idea is here. Yeah. You know? And, uh, what's the non evil version of this? And so we've got a little bit of that on Slack. Like there are a couple of people, it's rare. Like it is a very left leaning community, but there are some conservative people on Slack where I managed to have that kind of conversation with them. Yeah. yeah. And it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that like, but when people who are just like, Oh, you know, the, the problem with, uh, the both sides of the political spectrum is they're in a bubble. Like getting out of that bubble is not something that is just something you just choose to do. And like, Hey, now I'm out of the bubble Yeah, because there's a lot of people who are, there is like non additive information out there. It's not yeah. like I'm going to go like, Oh, the way to get out of this bubble is to read some Breitbart stories. Yeah. It's not to go in directly into another bubble, you know? Yes, exactly. It is not that it's like, I need an ambassador. Yeah. You know? And like that, I would love to have the power to just have like a, a computer that like explain this <laughs> stuff to me, you know? Um, yeah. 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 And then that's, and, and sports aren't a political issue. Like that it's for a lot of but, anything like, I don't it, understand. It I want the best. It can be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like Apple versus uh versus Android or whatever. Like people will turn it into into that. Like like that. Yeah. Like it, you know, that's what that conversation can can become if you're not careful about it. Because like, uh, I, eventually, it all gets back to like mindfulness. And are you thinking of like the consequences of these of these decisions that you're making or these allegiances that are you know that that you're forming or like what you're allowing to happen. You know, like right. just it, 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 everything gets back to, if not politics, something that is that is like very political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, uh, because as somebody like as as part of this urge that I've had to like, I need to understand what happened and understand these people who are who are not evil, who you know, who support this this guy and and support this stuff. So I've been like, I'll, I'll read comments for things, hmm. uh, which is you know, classic. You know, you don't do that, but I've been like, okay, let's let's take a look at it. Um, and see what the, the, these people actually think. And it is exclusively, uh, you know, is, is our, our president elect will do something, uh, against the best interest of the American people. Uh, somebody will, will posit that. And the people who dissent, it is entirely like, you know, your team would have done this. Your team is, the, is bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, it is like exclusively teamsmanship. It has nothing to do with answering the original mm-hmm. issue. Yep. And, and because of the venue, it's probably done in some kind of weird bastardized version of chance speak. Yeah. Sure. Like there's, there's a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Or, or it's, it's either that if it, it's on, you know, Facebook with links to like shitty, you know, yeah. uh, freedom, freedom, eagle dot double click dot face news, you know, dot <laughs> co, um, or something like that. Or it's in Twitter. So there's no room for actual articulation, but I would no. even just a link where it'd just be like, Oh, I don't think this is bad because of this. And then it would be a link to like a theory that, uh, the president elect could be working under mm-hmm. to make that, make it make sense. Yeah. You know, like how is this sold to you? You know, like I know why <laughs> Paul Ryan wants to cut food stamps. Right. But why, how did he sell that to you? You know, like how, <laughs> yeah. like why, why, what is the, the part of your morality that makes that sound like a good idea? Mm-hmm. You know? know, it's, um, it's something where one of the best things for me about going to college and moving away from home was being acquainted with a more diverse group of people. I think that can, that can only make your life better. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, is is getting to know people from a lot of different a lot of different walks of life. You know, this is an area where my where a little bit more diversity would actually be really good for me. You know, yeah. that, like like versions of these opinions that are not carried by family and thus, you know, are kind of encoded and There's kind no of like hard, hard, yeah, hard, you know, encoded with the relationship uh, and, the, yeah. and the power disparity, you know, of, you know, growing up with them. You know, it's, um, you could, it's hard. You could possibly suggest something without it being a personal attack. Right. You know, like it's not you disowning your family if you reject the idea. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I've, weirdly, I've gotten close to having com- conversations like that with my grandma who is conservative, yeah. but, but, but very reasonable when you can break it down. Like I, I, I actually got her to understand the trans bathroom issue. <laughs> I think. Well, that's <laughs> congratulations, man. Yeah. Like that's, you know. Uh, cause, cause again, like the, the, I know why, like it, the, the actual psychology behind why a conservative politician might like that is, is a, is a bot is a bigotry, mm-hmm. but there are people who I don't feel like are bigoted and like mm-hmm. the idea, how is it sold to them? You know? Yeah. It's like, did, did you get any insight as to, and I'm 
you know, using your grandma as a specific example, why not yeah. using it to villainize her in any way, right. but why she was under that impression beforehand. Like what, what is like, I don't understand what, what like she'd be, what she's scared of. Yeah. And she, so, so she is, it was, it was couched in a oh, man. I feel really bad talking about my family. You don't have to, yeah, you can pull the rip cord on this. At yeah. Any yeah. Point. I'll, like, I'll, I'll probably pull the rip cord on. It was, it was like the, it was the argument that you, that you see about like concern for kids. You okay. know, and it's like, you know, it was it was actually fairly easy to tell her why those bill why those bills don't do anything and actively harm people who are otherwise um, at risk, you know. Yeah. Who, yeah. who who already have enough enough stat against them without like new laws enforcing which bathrooms you can go into. One hundred. Yeah. yeah. And well, uh, good, get yeah. on here for, for doing so, you know. Yeah. I had help from Chris, um, too. Like like Chris yeah. was <laughs> Chris was there. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. But anyway, so. The um that's been a that's been a thing. The worst one that I saw, and just I now we're running long and we had intended to run short. <laughs> uh but you know, maybe maybe this uh you know, just to to give it uh you know, but the the worst thing I had seen was um somebody was talking about uh Sharia law or Sharia law mm-hmm. um on Facebook. And uh they were like the it was like the you know, freedom eagle dot double click, like shitty Facebook fake news thing. Yeah. And it was like, you know, 53% of Muslims in America want U.S. law replaced with Sharia law. Um, and the comments on it, uh, and it was like these interviews with, with Muslim people, and they were just like, yes, like, you know, I believe in, in Sharia law because uh, that's, that's their religion. Like that's, you know, um, and the comments were all people who had somehow gotten under the impression that like it would hermit crab its way into our laws. Mm-hmm. Like it would just be what we had instead of the entirety of U.S. law. Yeah. Like it's like we just have one or the other and we would just slot in this this other religion, you know, this religion's laws instead of our laws. Right. Uh, Which like one, like where do you how do you get that impression? You know, Um, but two, like the argument, uh, the other thing about it, would they be like, oh, well, that's their laws just come from a person, whereas the Constitution comes from God. And I'm like. The Constitution but, comes from God. Like, yeah, cool. yeah, no, what? like just like, like, well, like that, like that. So that gets that that gets tricky, a because yeah. um, you know, first off, boy oh boy, this is not a conversation I want to invite. Um, second off, they're talking about they're be kind of being afraid that their theocracy, uh, the, their theocracy will be replaced with or augmented by another theocracy. Um, and on top of that, it's a uh, it's fatwa envy. You yeah, know? like why can't we be as quote unquote barbaric as we? perceive them to be sure you know yeah like I think why, 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 why do they get to do that when we, we've been trying and failing for years you know yeah yeah there's a there's just a and uh the we the it is just it's just a mindset that i don't understand mm-hmm. like even if it am i most sympathetic to to people who are more religious than i am yeah you know like that that idea that like oh like it, it's it's an extra step like being the step to be like i believe in this higher power and it informs things is one step the next step to be like everyone else who believes in a different higher power is like a fucking idiot and being fooled yeah. is a step that I think is where you, it becomes harmful and awful. And like yeah. where biases that I have, which like I'll admit that I have like that's, they come from that and you don't judge anything, anybody by the worst of their people, any group mm-hmm. by the worst of their examples. But like, that's where some of like, you know, if people get infuriated about my perspective about that stuff, that's where some of it comes from. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that that's, what, that's what you're seeing because of where you're living your life. And if you talk to any number of people around you, they would either express a more moderate version of that or maybe the same thing. You know, if you have yeah. enough beers into them. Yeah. 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 Fucking okay, hey, man. All these warriors <laughs> of the eternal sun. <laughs> we should probably stop. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's probably good enough. I just, I was just happy to have something to talk about when I couldn't talk about this milk toast game. <laughs> Um, so thank you, you JB. Great. Yeah, thanks, JB. Um, <laughs> if you like the show, and, and honestly, um, <laughs> you know, God bless you. The um, please go to uh, patreon.com forward slash duckfeed TV and <laughs> drop us a couple bucks a month. Yeah, um, you can dictate games uh, at a certain level at twenty five dollars a month, and uh, you can suggest games at anything, and you can uh, be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs> if you're like these these guys have had enough D and D, you can dictate non D and D, and you can also. Uh, suggest non D to thin out that pool. Yeah, <laughs> so, to thin out that and, already very diluted and adverse pool. <laughs> and, I, and I love D and D. Like it's yes. not like you know, but it's just. Oof. Um, <laughs> what else, what else can they do? Cool. Um, they can like us on Facebook and leave rings and reviews on iTunes. I forget if you already said that. I have not. Okay, all of that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, until next time, uh, who is who is Blink Dog? Blink dog? That's pretty good.
But now what do we do next time? <laughs> Moondog? Moondog, yeah. Blink dog, moondog. Death dog. <laughs> Thank you.